Hi, my name is BJ Rolison, and I want to thank you for taking time to view this webcast. This presentation is intended to provide you with an overview of API testing and explain why API testing may add value to your project team. First, I will review the basic concepts of what API testing is and why we should consider API testing. I will explain some of the differences between unit testing and API testing and also discuss common approaches to API testing. Finally, I will categorize some of the bugs that are usually found more efficiently via API testing compared to other testing strategies. API stands for Application Programming Interface. An API is essentially a library of functions, data structures, and classes used by developers to perform a specific task such as drawing a window or posting a comment to the internet. Developers only need to call the API and don't have to worry about the details of how the task is implemented inside the API. From a testing perspective, we generally focus API testing at the component and integration levels of testing. When we test the robustness of an API, we are generally testing at the component level. But we also test APIs at the integration level when we design tests to evaluate how APIs integrated into a build work together to perform a functional task or an end-to-end -end scenario. API testing is typically performed below the user interface. API testing, especially integration level testing, should be designed to test end-to-end -to -end tasks while monitoring data and control flow through the program. The focus of API testing is on the core functionality or business logic provided by the APIs. API testing is not useful for evaluating the customer's experience using the product. In complex systems, the business logic or core functionality of a software program is separated from the user interface. The business logic or core functionality doesn't know anything about the, the user interface and the user interface doesn't know anything about how the API is implemented. In fact, in most cases, a user interface usually doesn't access the API directly. So, API testing focuses on the core functionality where it lives rather than through some user interface. There are many benefits to API testing. First, API testing engages testers early in the development lifecycle and enables them to participate in all aspects of the project. It also helps drive testing upstream through earlier functional testing and by working more closely with our teammates in development. API testing can also potentially reduce automation maintenance costs. We know that GUI automation can be unstable due to changes in the user interface, but API interfaces stabilize much earlier in the development lifecycle, so once an API signature is defined, testers can start designing an automated test, even before the implementation of that API. API testing can also help reduce business costs by potentially identifying bad check-ins into a build. In my team, we use a subset of our API tests in conjunction with unit tests that developers run as a pre-check-in suite on a private build prior to committing a check-in into the branch. This pre-check-in suite was one way we significantly reduced costly build breaks. Finally, Testing the core functionality at the API level where it lives enabled us to change how we design our GUI automation. Automating tests through the GUI can focus more on the software behavior and reduces the number of redundant functional tests through the GUI. So, when is API testing a good investment? First, API testing only makes sense when the business logic or core functionality is separate from the customer interface. Not all interfaces are graphical, so API testing is also valuable when testing headless agents. When you are developing and releasing public APIs that will be consumed by third party or external developers, API testing is a critical piece of the test strategy because consumers of your APIs expect them to function properly in their programs. 
Also, APIs are important in large organizations where the developers who are designing the graphical user interface or other first-party applications are different than the developers implementing the core functionality or business logic. Sometimes API testing is confused with unit testing. So let's look at some of the key differences. Unit testing is owned by developers who implement the API and is usually targeted towards the functions or methods contained within a class. Developers will generally use stubs or mocks to emulate dependencies, and unit tests are generally designed to test the happy path or answer the question, does this function do what it is contractually supposed to do? By contrast, API tests are usually written by testers, and they can be negative tests designed to look for problems in a specific API implementation, or they can be broader in scope to test how multiple APIs work together to accomplish end-to-end -end tasks. While unit tests are usually ran prior to check-in and on private bills, API tests can be ran as part of a pre-check-in suite and more commonly immediately after a new build to test for build integration problems. API tests are designed to answer the question, do the components in my project play well together? Sometimes there is confusion about whether the approach to API testing is a black box activity or a white box activity. In my opinion, it is not an either or proposition. API testing should include both a black box approach and a white box approach. The basic goal of black box testing is to assess the output conditions or state for a given set of inputs without taking into consideration the implementation or internal program structure. The API signature is defined well before the API is implemented. The signature tells us what types of argument values are passed as inputs to the API parameters and also the type and expected return value or results. So, just like any other black box approach, testing is focused on defining inputs and evaluating the results without any knowledge of the implementation. Designing API tests from a black box approach can be broken down into five categories. Input selection involves defining the argument values that we need to pass to the API parameters. In most cases, we cannot test every input value for an API parameter. The goal is to partition your input domain efficiently and build intelligent subsets of input values that you believe will provide necessary test coverage. The most common approach to selecting input values is to partition each parameter's input domain into sets of values for both positive and negative testing. For enumeration types, it is usually a good practice to try all possible values for enumerated data in API calls. Most API functions are designed so the caller must pass or input argument values to multiple parameters. Different combinations of input argument values could affect the output condition or result from the API. This is a perfect scenario for combinatorial or pairwise testing. Using a tool such as PICT to help select a subset of parameter combinations could reveal important defects in the code as well as increase code coverage. We should also consider implementing test cases based on output conditions as well. Verification of returned error codes or thrown exceptions is as important as return values or state in API testing. The API signature should provide a list of errors or exceptions that may be returned by the API. For example, a false Boolean condition, an H result less than zero, a null pointer, or throwing an exception are common errors returned from an API called with invalid argument values. We should design tests to generate each error condition. We also need to test member properties belonging to the API being tested. Tests for properties might include getting and setting the value of read-write property, getting a read-only property, and trying to set a read-only property. Finally, similar to black box testing through the user interface, 
API tests include end-to-end -end scenarios by calling the, a sequence of APIs to complete certain functional tasks. Tests should detail the sequence of calls and parameter values to implement each scenario. API testing should also implement failure scenarios and not just valid cases. API testing from a white or glass box perspective can also provide additional value. API testing from the white box is like pulling back the covers and exposing the implementation details of the API. One type of white box testing is code reviews. Code reviews have been found to be effective in identifying specific types of bugs, especially security bugs. Even informal code reviews or buddy checks prior to check-in have demonstrated value in many development teams. Involving testers in code reviews provides yet another perspective and may add even more value in identifying bugs sooner. Code coverage analysis is a white box test approach used to assess what code has been executed by a set of tests and more importantly what code has not been executed. Code coverage analysis is about identifying unexecuted code and designing additional tests if necessary to add value or reduce potential risks. Keep in mind that the ultimate goal of code coverage is not to try to achieve some magic number, but instead to find holes in functional testing coverage. Injecting faults in API tests is one way to simulate certain types of error conditions or exercise code paths that are not commonly called under normal conditions. Fault injection tools can simulate resource failures, such as memory allocation errors, disk errors, or timing delays to find thread synchronization problems. The purpose of these tests is to ensure the API handles error conditions gracefully and do not crash or corrupt system memory. Trace statements are used to log information about the system as it runs similar to logging statements in an automated test. Trace statements can help testers track code flow and data flow during program execution. Tracing can help identify problems that cannot easily de be detected using black box testing approaches. Regardless of your testing approach, API testing requires us to design and develop a set of automated test cases. Automated API tests generally follow a five-stage design pattern. Also remember that API tests should be atomic operations that can be executed independently or in any order. The first step is the setup step. Setup involves calling common methods or functions to perform tasks such as initializing data, creating objects, starting services, or setting machine states. Basically, setup is about putting the system into a known machine state required for the test to execute. Next are execution steps. These are the statements to exercise the API or the, a sequence of APIs. The execution steps should be liberally sprinkled with calls to log information about test execution flow and machine state if necessary. As a side note regarding logging, if a test fails and you cannot determine the, the cause of the failure from the log files, then you probably aren't logging enough information. The verification steps call on the oracles of test automation. Oracles are methods or functions usually used to compare actual results against expected results. For example, Oracles can be used to verify correct exceptions or error codes, verify object creation, and verify output parameters or return values. But oracles can also be used to validate machine state or conditions between ex test execution statements. The reporting stage records the outcome of the test. An automated test should be designed to log a passing and failing results from the oracle but also log unexpected terminations or exceptions during the execution of the test. In cases where the setup or test execution step fails before the oracle is called, the test case should abort and report the test is blocked. The last step is cleanup. Cleanup basically means to return the system to its pre-test state by releasing memory, 
shutting down services, and deleting stores or files used by that test. API testing can be very effective in identifying specific types of bugs, but we must remember Boris Beiser's pesticide paradox. The pesticide paradox essentially states that no single approach to testing is capable of finding all classes or types of bugs. So, testing complex systems requires multiple approaches and perspectives throughout the complete development cycle. Some of the bugs, such as duplicate functionality and unused flags, might only be found through API testing. A lot of these bugs, such as incorrect handling of valid argument values and failure to handle error conditions, might be exposed through other testing methods, but API testing may find them sooner and more efficiently. While API testing may expose some issues in performance and stress, in my experience, testing performance and stress is more effectively through the graphical user interface and is also more likely to expose issues our customers might encounter. However, I have also found that other non-functional areas such as bandwidth or data usage and battery usage on devices, concurrency and load testing are usually more efficient at the API level as compared to testing through the GUI. I hope this presentation provided you with an overview of API testing. Some of the key points I wanted to highlight include the benefit to the entire project team, especially in Agile teams. API testing gets testers engaged in all aspects of the development life cycle. For the greatest impact, API testing should involve both black box and white box testing approaches. Each approach is intended to focus testing on different things and expose different types of bugs. API testing can be more effective and efficient in finding certain types of bugs, but remember it is not good at finding all types of bugs. Also, API testing should focus on finding bugs that matter to the customers, including other developers. A limitation of API testing is that it doesn't evaluate the product behavior or how the customer interacts with the product. API testing doesn't negate the need for system testing through the user interface. However, it can change how we design tests through the user interface, especially automated tests. It can potentially reduce redundant tests and eliminate tests that provide no additional value in the project. Obviously, API testing requires additional skills. In addition to having a great tester mindset, an API tester also needs to understand the programming language the API is being implemented in for white box testing. API testers also need to be able to, de to design and develop automated tests in a programming language that minimizes the abstraction layers between the test code and the API code. API testing may not be for everyone, but in large organizations with multiple developers working on different parts of the project, API testing can be beneficial. When releasing public APIs for developers to use in building third-party applications, API testing is critical. And for testers who are looking to get engaged throughout the project cycle or find their roles in an agile world, then API testing is another way to add value to the team and the product. For more of my thoughts on API testing, please see my blog at www.testingmentor.com forward slash I am testing. If you have any questions or comments, please email me or ping me on Twitter. Once again, Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to view this webcast. I hope it was a valuable use of your time and inspired some new thoughts.